This is section 2.1, the meaning and properties of fractions in pre-algebra. Fractions seem to be what everyone hates in math, and we'll see if we can uh, maybe clear up some confusion and some uh, hatred for the poor fractions in this lesson. And first of all, let's just define what a fraction is. A fraction is any number that can be put in this form. A and B are both just any number. So in a, uh, a form where one number is over the top of another one, which is actually, in the last section, remember, that was a division sign. It's basically the same thing. And the bottom number, B, cannot be equal to zero. And we'll go into some reasons why that's true um, later on, but right now just suffice it to say that the bottom number cannot be zero. And that's all a fraction is. Now what um, what do the parts of a fraction mean? Well, this bottom part called the denominator is how many pieces the whole is divided up into. So if we have a pie that bottom number 4 says that the whole pie is divided into 4 pieces. The top number, the numerator, tells you how many of those pieces we have. So there's 4 pieces of the whole pie. That top number 3 means that we have, out of that whole pie, we have 3 of those pieces. And that's really what a fraction is. It's just telling you what part of the whole you have. We have three out of the four pieces, and it takes four pieces to make up the whole. Now the book goes into uh, fractions on a number line. They have fractions in a pie like I just showed, and uh, we're just I'm going to leave that up to you to look that over if you're interested, but uh, I think sometimes when you have too many different ways of describing something, it just makes it really confusing. Now there's two different types of fractions. One type of fraction is called a proper fraction, and the other type of fraction is called an improper fraction. And there isn't really too much difference, or too much involved in that. The only thing that you have to look at is if you have uh, the top number, if it's smaller than the bottom, it's called proper. And when the top number is the same as or larger than the bottom, it's called improper. Okay, and that's it as far as as far as improper and proper. And the next thing I want to look at here are called equivalent fractions. Now, equivalent, you hear the word equal, they're fractions that are the same. But one of the things that's important to realize is that sometimes fractions can look different and still equal the same number. So, for example, if we have the uh, fraction 1 half and the fraction 2 over 4, they are they are looking different, but when we take 2 over 4 and reduce it by dividing the top number by 2 and uh, getting 1, and the bottom number, if we divide it by 2, we get 2. So, therefore, they're equivalent because when 2 over 4 is reduced, it's equal to one half. And what we're going to do in this section and some of the examples is I'm going to give you some fractions that look different. And uh, what I want you to do is, uh, well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a fraction like three-fourths. And I'm going to ask you to write an equivalent fraction that instead of a four in the denominator has a 20. So that means the top number needs to be changed so that some number over 20, when it's reduced, will equal 3 over 4. And there's a pretty simple way of doing that. You look and see that the bottom number here is a 4 that we started with, and we want to turn it into a 20. So how did we go from a 4 to a 20? What did we have to multiply 4 by in order to get 20? In this case, it's 5. So if 4 times 5 equals 20, then we multiply the top number 3 by the same number 5, and we get 15. 
and therefore 15 over 20 is an equivalent fraction to 3 over 4. And that's all there is to that. So let's say that I have a 3 fourths, and I want you to write an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12x. Okay, so I had to go from 4 to 12x. Well, in the last chapter, we learned um, about multiplying numbers with letters. And if I multiply this 4 times 3x, what does that mean? It means I multiply the 4 times the 3, and I can't do anything with the x except drag it along with me. So 4 times 3 is 12, and the x gets drug along. So that means I have to multiply the top number by 3x and I get 9x. So 9x over 12x is the same as 3 fourths. Now that works all fine and dandy when the fraction that we're looking at has bigger numbers than the fraction we start with. So like we started with 3 fourths and one of the examples was I wanted to change this to a 20. So I wanted to change the 4 to a 20. So I just found a number, 5, that I could multiply by 4 to get 20, and I multiplied the 3 by 5 and got 15, and that gave me an equivalent fraction. So I went from small numbers to large numbers. What if I want to go from large numbers to small numbers? So I want to change 10 over 12 to some number over 6. Well, I just do the opposite of multiply. I'm going from, when you multiply, you're going from a small number to a larger number. When you're dividing, you go from a larger number to a smaller number. So I'm going from a 12 to a 6. Well, how do I get from a 12 to a 6? Well, I divide by 2. And then I divide my 10 by 2. 2. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, so 5, 6 is the same as 10 over 12. Okay. The next section in this lesson is called the number 1 in fractions. And there's two situations that happen in math that have to do with fractions in the number 1. The first situation is when a 1 occurs in the denominator like 3 over 1. Well, when you have any number over 1, the answer is, or it can be reduced to or simplified to, just that number. And you don't even need to put the 1 on there. But it's good to know because sometimes you need to, you need to know that 3 is the same as 3 over 1 because you're going to use that maybe later in canceling fractions and things like that. Uh, the second situation occurs when the numerator and the denominator are the same. Anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, it doesn't matter what number is in the numerator and the denominator, if they're the same, the answer is 1. Okay? So, uh, that works well too when you're reducing fractions. So it's good to remember that uh, any number over itself is 1, any number over 1 is itself, is the numerator. Okay, so let's look at comparing fractions, the next section. When we're comparing fractions, we're trying to see which of the fractions is larger and which one is smaller. The only way you can determine which fraction is larger or smaller is if the denominators are the same. If I have a number like 1 half, and I have another fraction, two-thirds. Just by looking at those, you can't necessarily tell which of the two is larger and which of the two is smaller. So you have to make common denominators in order to make that decision. So what I do in this particular one is I'm going to put the one-half here and the two-thirds here, and we'll just get rid of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a common denominator. So what is the common denominator, the smallest common denominator of 2 and 3. Well, one of the, the next number that 2 goes into besides 2 is 4, but 3 doesn't go in 4. 
The next one it goes into is 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 3 goes into 6. So that ends up being your least common denominator. So how did I go how how do I go from 2 to 6? Well, I multiply 2 times 3 and that gives me 6. And remember, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to multiply the numerator 1 times 3 and get 3 6. So 1 half is the same as 3 6. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with our 2 thirds. We're going to make that 3 into a 6. So what do we have to multiply the 3 by to get it to be a 6? A 2. And that gives me a 6 on the bottom. And what do I multiply the top number by? I multiply it by 2 as well. So now I have 3, 6 and 4, 6. Now I can compare the two. And all I have to do is look at the numerator. The 3 is, lar is smaller than the 4. So... 3, 6 is smaller than 4, 6, or if we go back to our original equation, 1 half is smaller than 2 thirds. Okay, so we find common denominators and we multiply um, both the denominators by a number in order to get that common denominator, and then we multiply the numerator by that same number and we compare the two. And that is it for section 2.1.